We thought we had interviewed all the professors in the world, but this is our first well, chance one at... one of the main things in order to satisfy the curiosity of those who interpret possibilities that can exist only <laughs> after due consideration. Can I introduce you? What was the question? The world's foremost authority, Professor Erwin Corey. Right. Welcome. Well, I, I, I feel not only honored, but I feel the confrontation upon which we have set our sights can no longer endure at the propensity of a developing prognosis. Now you say, what? It doesn't matter that we... What was the question? <laughs> What's your name, sir? <laughs> oh, Professor Erwin Corey, the world's foremost authority. Not only has my information uh, deterred those who have contributed financially to this uh, tremendous establishment realize that we can have another diphthong or a telethon in order to raise money for some needy dictators that are outside and we have to have the phone calls otherwise we cannot cooperate with those who intended to sublimate their, their curiosity bringing about as he once said uh, uh, the various president uh, uh, what's his name mayor uh, no uh, george George Bush. Remember, he said, read my lips and kiss my... But he didn't know the, 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 the result that could uh, proclamate a source from that innuendo. Three, two, one. When the war news becomes too difficult to listen to, most of us have the option of just changing the channel, finding a temporary emotion. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> Sorry, the naked. Well, <laughs> 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 I'm talking about a refuge, you know, some guy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll have to go up. So we figured, why not see how this plan works in reality by going to a school system that's adopted it. So today. We went to the John Marshall School in Dorchester to see if it's real. <laughs> that wasn't going to work from the start. God, I knew I was in trouble. I was when I lost the chair the first time. Uh, it's not a refrigerator. Three. Two, one. Wilson spent the day meeting with the mayor and the governor and getting to know Boston. One of the... Th ah! Joe, you are awful. Stop. <laughs> he just messed me. <laughs> that wasn't funny. <laughs> the high number of unemployed union members made just being in the same party as the president a liability for Sears today. For the 10 o'clock news, I'm Christy George reporting. Y'all think this is easy. This neighborhood, they're all familiar to me. I'm going to pop you right in the head, kid. Uh, stop it. <laughs> Hold up, Mom. When, when you guys get tired, let me know. Hey, guys, there goes Channel 5. <laughs> I knew that would do it. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, this is, this is a magic word. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. And. <laughs> here we go. No, that's all right. We may use it for outtake. Uh, here we go. All right, and. <clears throat> In this letter to the Secretary of Transportation, members of the main. In this. Mil In this letter to. Forget this. <laughs> <laughs> is there, is there a, okay, one more time, one more time. <clears throat> All right, five, six, seven, and stretch and lift. Oh my goodness, lightning and, whoa! <laughs> At the heart of all of this tax talk is a question of courage. There's a fly that's been dived on all night long, and I've been waiting for it to land on Marcus's nose so I can slap it off. I, there. I don't know if anyone's heard it, but it has come in. I was telling, we should clear the runway, put down some foam. It sounds big. It could, it could come in for a it's crash been landing. Carrying luggage, folks. It's pretty big. We're here to fix up some news. Hey, guy, I like your mustache.
Oh, great. Doing psych? <laughs> I was, Greg, you twit. Come on. Does this tape cost money? I mean, this is bad. Come on. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. G N A B, will ya? Okay, let's go. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Nah, come on, come on, lads, get yourself together, will you? Come on, what, what's funny here? I was reminded of you last week by, of all people, Chuck D of the Public Enemy rap group. Did you ever think of yourself as a rap group? Of course not. Hey, I could go for you, guy. Where basketball is king, I feel right at home in this gymnasium. This budget cuts programs, not just dollars, but it gains some credibility for cutting programs benefiting Reagan's constituencies loans for small businessmen and exporters, subsidies for farmers, scholarships for middle-class college students, things like that. Congressman Barney Franks, yes, sarcastic comment to his constituents in Fall River today was, cheer up, you may be losing police and street lights, public transit and development money, but you helped build an airport in Grenada. The unsarcastic version of the same point from a White House advisor quoted in the New York Times this morning was that to Reagan, the welfare state has become a support system for the middle class. Now he's trying to pull it away. That's our news tonight. I'm Gail, I'm Christopher Lydon. You're Gail Harris. <laughs> I'm Gail Harris, still am. Thanks for joining us. Good night. That's our news. I'm Christopher Lydon. And I'm Chris, I'm Carmen Fields. Who am I? Good night. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure what it is. It's sort of chocolatey and brown. And that's our news for Eddie Christopher Leidengall. The feeling of being hemmed in in a possibility that all this uh, nitrogenous waste, which seems to uh, uh, elude a concept which can be more didactic. <laughs> and the dichotomy of that source can only reveal to a certain extent that unlike poles contract and like poles um, attract the unlike poles. And, uh, that's why we have them separated. Because if those poles ever got together, we'd be out of a job. You've got to understand that it is not an ethnic policy that we are pursuing. What was the question? I, I wonder where you stood on, on uh, flag burning and a constitutional amendment to stop it. Well, I really think our flag stands for something and once we find out what it is, I think we'll have more concern for it. A professor who doesn't mince his words, Erwin Corey, thank you. Well, I thank you for having me because after all, let's face it, if we don't explain the possibilities, we will be remaining in the same dilemma. And if we don't change our direction soon, we run the risk of ending up exactly where we're heading. And this can be <laughs> in a feeling of osmosis. <laughs> Exactly.